So you're here because you have the most pimped out garage gym <laughs> in the in the universe, probably. Oh, thanks, bud. Um, it's fucking amazing. Now, like, isn't that dope? Oh, I forgot about that picture. Look at that. That's so cool. The before and after. That's a trip. How big hmm. is that space, dude? It's way. not that big because we've got um, we got 600 square foot under roof, and then we've got another we got another 1500 in the back. See, that's the big thing is we didn't just do we we ended up we changed the whole uh, outline of that. We still have the door on the right side, but the left one we closed. Uh, essentially, we we closed in the whole place. We I put insulation in the ceiling. I put a split system on the on the wall, so it's AC, and there's a door in the back that goes directly to the backyard. So clients come in. It's totally separate from the house. Clients come in through the back gate. They come in. We do we do meet in the gym. We do our workout. Obviously, that's usually indoor, outdoor, because there's a lot of stuff you need room for. And then in the back is the sauna, the ice bath, mm. the endless pool pretty soon. And then, um, yeah, that's phase two. Wow. But it's pretty cool. And do you live here? You mm -hmm. live there? Yeah. Is that is any part of that weird? You know, you have, I got people training in the garage, or does that work out okay? Or? It actually works out beautifully. It could not be better. I couldn't be happier with it. It uh, Because of the way we train, because we only do one-on-one -on -one or semi-private, and it's all me. That's the thing, too, is we have a four-person team, but I'm the only coach. Everything else is our, – our expansion is primarily through, you know, online sector. Of course, we're doing a lot more seminar work. We can talk about that as well. But the in-person training, that's all me. So I get to work with the schedule. I get to work with the periodization. And I get to work with the clients. And um, the, inc the best thing about this is the growth that we've seen has been through collaborations. Mm. And that's – I mean, this, this is the culmination of all that at this moment. And thank you guys again. I want to make sure that I say this, you know, out loud and everything. Thank you so much for having us on. This is a tr it. this is a true honor. But, but I've, uh, like I said through email, you made this shit happen because we were actually going back and forth, and I got him confused with another brand in that I was trying to get Mark on his show. So right after I talked yeah. to Mark about it, I was I was writing back brand in. I was just like, oh hey, sorry dude, we're going to focus yeah. on our own stuff. And you're like, no no no, that's not what I was asking for. And I was like, wait what? And then I looked <laughs> you up and I'm like, oh fuck, dude, my bad. Like yes, let's make this happen. So yeah, you I. I I mean, yes, thank you. We appreciate you and your time, but like, yeah. I just want you to know, like, you made this happen, Thanks, which bro. which yeah. I love because a lot of people are just like, oh, you got lucky, or you know, like people get mad at other people, but <laughs> of course, yeah, you made this shit happen, and I'm really stoked that you're here. Me too, bro. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew, for course, dude. being the point of contact on this and everything. Mm -hmm. No, you know, making it happen. That's that's the key to actually making an entrepreneur an entrepreneur. That is the one thing that you just have to realize is that in order for anything to succeed, if it's just you, it's just you. And you know, like I said, I've got a four-person team now. In the beginning, I didn't have any of that. So being at a place where you have to realize that you know no one's coming, like no one's going to make anything happen. You've got to be the guy to clean the floors, clean the bathroom, and do all the gym stuff. Like you got to be able to do it all. That is, uh, <laughs> I, 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 sure this dude. One. These are the dopest dumbbells I've ever seen. Oh, aren't they, dude? Those are oh, so yeah, sick. Oh yeah, man. Are those custom made or like where did you get them? Um, I got those. You'd have a hard time getting them now. They're from mm -hmm. Russia. Yeah, you're not going to be able to get ah, those anymore. All right. Wow. They, uh, they, uh, they're in, they're in, uh, kilograms. And I mean, th those, that was a later iteration. We had dumbbells before. Of course I had to get those oh, because so as, as the brand progressed and yeah. as we became, you know, the superhero, the comic book jam, I'm like, well, I, I know those exist. I got to figure out a way to get them. Um, but most of our stuff now, as I mentioned, comes, comes through collaboration. Mm. Uh, most of these companies and stuff that we deal with, they, it's, it's cool because it's, it's at a point now where they also reach out to us right? and, and, and there's value on both sides of the equation now. Mm -hmm. And that is the big thing that I want to kind of bring to the table for the community, especially for the garage gym community. Pat Project Family, how's it going? I want to tell you guys about the legendary Tasty Pastry. And we've talked about Ben and Jerry's and snacks and stuff on the podcast, but those can go against your goals. They can be too calorically dense and they can really make you crave more bad foods. But the crazy, the crazy thing about the legendary Tasty Pastry is that it's 20 
grams of protein and five grams of net carbs and 180 calories. And they taste amazing. You guys need to check them out. They have tons of flavors. Andrew, how can they get it? Yeah. And the other thing, they passed the kid test. Kids love these things as mm. well. Head over to eatlegendary.com and at checkout, enter promo code power project to save 20% off all the tasty pastries, all the nut butters, all the almonds, everything. Again, eatlegendary.com. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Let's get back to the podcast. There are a lot of trainers right now that are really looking inward. And that's in large part because of COVID. I mean, a lot of trainers had, they had to go in where they're like, well, I kind of have to train for my house now. I got to figure out a way to get mobile. I got to get, a, I got to get park workouts and I need to figure out a way to do this. And we get that question a lot too. Did you do this in response to COVID? And I always say like, no, man, we, we've been doing this for, you know, seven years now. It's just happened to happen when COVID happened that that took off. But bringing this as a alternative business model for professionals and for people who actually want to do training and want to be somebody who's somewhat of an expert, doing it this way is a very different, because most people it's all right, you know, I, maybe I get a certification, maybe I go to school, I get out, I go to Lifetime Fitness, I train there, I build up my client base and then I leave and I get my own place and hopefully they come with me, maybe not, I don't know, but that's kind of the way that everyone grows in the industry I, I found and I didn't do any of that. As I mentioned to you, I, I trained with Ian Danny when I was younger, so that was an incredible opportunity to get the you know the proper mechanisms down for training. But for business expansion, that was all trial and error later on. And doing it this way was sort of just a passion project that never stopped. I I don't believe in luck. I don't believe people get lucky. I think I mean to to a degree perhaps, but in my opinion, the people that get success, they earned it. They mm -hmm. did something to create who they are. You know, most successful people aren't stupid. And being able to get to this point required a lot of hard work and trial and error. And the cool thing is that now there's a specific place in the market for it. There's a lot of trainers that are looking to do it. A lot of uh, people who want to train in these kinds of environments. This is the video that I was referencing to you, Mark, earlier. This is the Viking press set nice. up with the Henny attachment. See how I got the landmine? Yeah, that's awesome. Then the Henny. Then oh, the plate, wow. then the elite. That's it's, sick. It's perfect. That's creative. It's the That's best. Now, with uh, Ian Danny, like, first of all, Ian is like probably the person that knows the most about training that I ever met in my life. Like, it's insane. Yeah. Same here. Understudy of Charles Poliquin. Um, you know, training with someone like that is not inexpensive. So what? What was the, and you interned for him is like, mm -hmm. so you got personal training from him and you interned for him. Yeah. Um, that sounds like a big commitment. What was the reason behind the commitment? At the time, we had a family friend who had a brief tryout with the Buffalo Bills and he was training with Ian. And he kind of got me in the door at all because even if you were willing to pay for it, Ian isn't just going to intern anybody. He's not just going to let anybody do this. Uh, he took me in and said, hey, look, you know, this kid, he's 17. He really wants to do this. He loves sports. He has, he thinks he wants to do a training. And at the time, I mean, I, I could sit here and say, oh, I was the savant at 17. I knew I wanted to do this garage gym empire. I didn't know any of that. I didn't have any idea what I was going to do. But I knew I liked being uh, physically active. I knew I liked training and lifting weights and watching Arnold and all that stuff. So I started going. And in the beginning, it was a situation where at the time, I mean, I was 17, I couldn't afford Ian. My, my dad, he said, all right, look, you know, you want to do this. I, you're, you're doing an internship in some capacity. I will basically foot the bill to get you to do this because you say you want to learn how to do it. Then I want you to learn how to do it right. So that turned into a four-year on and off relationship where I was actually starting school and all through college, I would come back and in the summer times, I would always train with Ian. And that's kind of what I did. That gave me the foundation of everything I know today about strength training. It shaped, I didn't, I didn't even know, I, I didn't even know how to bench press. I didn't even know how to, do, nothing. I knew nothing about anatomy, nothing about exercise fizz. All of that took off. But to your earlier question, I mean, yeah, that was a big investment, big monetary investment, big investment of time. I trained with him uh, five days a week in the summer times. Wow. And Ian, I mean, I'm sure Ian's probably charging uh, now. I mean, probably 250, 350 a session now. I mean, I'm sure he, the guy, the, the athletes he's with, I mean, what do they care? They make, you know, $10 million <laughs> a year. But um, he, yeah, it, unbelievable. And seeing, see, I, I don't do classes. I've never done that. I don't have a boot camp mentality. I, frankly, I have a fundamental issue with camps or classes in general. I just don't like them. 
I think there, there's too much missing. But doing it his way and learning only the one-on-one -on -one training motive or uh, you know method taught me how to do what I do today perfectly. Couldn't be any better. I modeled everything I built off of his model at a smaller scale. I wanted, that's essentially, if you'd asked me at the beginning of this, how do you want this to look? It'd be like, I want, I want performance enhancement professionals, but I want it for gen pop. I want normal people to be able to go to Ian's for less money. That's the way I kind of thought about it in my head. Power Project family, a lot of the guys in the audience said that they hate me whispering. So I won't whisper anymore. I'll just whisper here again. So go ahead and comment down below. Like, comment, subscribe, and check out all our sponsors here in the bio or the description. Okay. All right. Bye.